These are the notes for Unit 7, Day 7, and um, we're continuing our discussion about dividing polynomials. And um, I, one of the big discussions, uh, one of the, the big uh, learning targets, I guess, um, that we discussed last class was whether or not we had a remainder. <clears throat> and if we have a remainder, then um, we have this leftover fractional part. Um, and if we don't have a remainder, then we know we found a factor. And that's really important uh, because if we found a factor, then we can take um, the result and continue the process to find other factors. And so that's what we're going to focus on today and uh, is extending that um, idea of that no remainder um, scenario. Um, so that we can find, we can fully factor the polynomial. So it's kind of along these lines. Let's start with <coughs> um, this statement in 1a here. We've got 5 times the number equals 210. And let me just pause here. We have this little heart here. Um, but consider the heart a variable. Um, we didn't want to use x because we didn't want to kind of muddy the waters by using an, uh, a traditional variable, so we used a symbol. Okay, so 5 times a number equals 210. So we know that if we want to find what the heart is, we can just take 210 and divide out 5. And the easiest way to do that with just numbers is our long division um, process, right? So we know that 5 doesn't go into 2 because 2 is smaller, but 5 goes into 21 four times, so we put the 4 over the 1, and that leaves us with 20, which really represents 200, and then our remainder is 1. We bring down the 0, and we know that 5 goes into 10 twice, and we see we have no remainder. So we know that um, if we have no remainder, then 5 is a factor, and, um, and so we know that the value for the heart then, I'm not that good at drawing hearts apparently, the value for the heart then is 42. <clears throat> and so, uh, and, and we also know that we can rewrite the expression then as 210 equals 5 times 42. So there are th those two, those two uh, answers, 5 and 42, become two factors of 210. And so if you notice this next step here, <coughs> we know 5 is a factor. We've done that. And so now if we divide out the 5, we can get 3 times, I don't, we use the same symbol, a heart equals 42. And so we can divide out that. 3 goes into 4 once, 3 goes into 12 twice. <coughs> and so what we see is that um, in this round of dividing, the heart equals 14. So we know that 210 can be broken down even further is into 5, and, and instead of times 42, it can be broken down into times 3 and times 14. And then we can keep continuing to break that down if we wanted to. But what we're doing here is we're, this process is that we are factoring uh, 210. We are factoring 210 into numbers that are kind of our base numbers are as small as they can be. So for instance, at this point, I might not need long division anymore, but I could factor 14, right? That's 2 times 7. And so really 210 is 5 times 3 times 2 times 7. And now I've got numbers that are so small that they can't be broken down any further. And in fact, we call this, because look at 5 and 3 and 2 and 7, those are all prime numbers. So we call that the prime factorization. <clears throat> okay. 
and um, and so you might have heard that term before. It's when, we, it's when we've done like a, a factor tree, uh, that sort of thing. But um, that's really what we're getting after here on our polynomials is can we factor them completely so that we can get them in uh, factored form. Remember factored form from earlier in the chapter. So, um, so that's what we're going for here. And so um, what does it mean <clears throat> if a number divides into a number evenly? We talked about this. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of this term evenly because it implies an even number and that's not really, sh that's not really the case. It can be an odd number. Um, but really what this means is that there is no remainder. Okay, so we can apply this to our polynomials then, right? We, right now we're asking, um, so it's a salvage equation for the heart, show your work and explain how you got your answer. And so um, <clears throat> we, uh, we know that um, we are going to take this x plus two and divide it into that polynomial two x cubed minus x squared minus 22x minus 24. <clears throat> so just to get back to our vocabulary, this is a factor. And we're looking for the heart factor. And this is our product. So we know our product goes on the inside of our area model. And we know our factors will have lower powers so um, one lower power of this would be a degree two. So we know we need a column for the x squared and a column for the x and a column for the number. So we know we need a model that's about that big. And now we can put x plus two as one of the factors. And then we can put the two x cubed in the upper left hand corner. And we should be able to get the negative 24 in the lower right. Let's see what shakes out here. So uh, we know that <clears throat> this fill in the blank has got to be a 2x squared to make the 2x cubed. And then multiplying this out, we get 4x squared. And then um, we know the x squared term is made by adding the diagonal terms in the area model. And this needs to make up, this needs to be minus 1x squared. So this must be minus 5x squared. And um, then if this is minus 5x squared, then this fill in the blank above it must be minus 5x. And then that makes the bottom box minus 10x. And then we know that the x terms are also developed along the diagonal. So this x term is minus 22x. Right, that I'm getting those from up here. It's got to add up to that. I forgot to put my box around the minus 1x squared too. Um, and so to make minus 22, I need another minus 12x to add up the negative 22. And then that means this fill in the blank up here must be negative 12. <clears throat> so this must be minus 12. And then that last box then, right, we're always checking to make sure whether or not we have a remainder. This is negative 24. Oops. And if we notice that matches, so we have found a factor. So we know that um, we know that two x squared. That I guess I go back to the the original statement. The value of that heart then is two x squared minus five x minus twelve. And like above, like in question one here, we're, we're continuing. So we say now that uh, we've got the same product here. And so, and if you, oops. And if you notice, we have one of the original factors here, the x plus two. 
not getting my highlighters. Um, and we also have x minus 4 as a factor. So <clears throat> what we're saying here is if we divide out that factor, we really have um, x minus 4 times heart equals this, uh, this new polynomial x squared or 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. And um, and so we want to find that we want to factor this again. Basically, we want to divide out x minus four. So now we're factoring this <clears throat> lower degree polynomial. So we're we we're keep we keep introducing new factors so that we can fully factor this polynomial. So um, at this point, because it's a quadratic, so let me just pause here. Uh, right now we have a quadratic. So um, we could do a number of things because you have factored quadratics before, uh, and we don't always have to do the area model, but we can. So that's one way. We could also do the star method. We could also do <clears throat> um, some of you were doing, you know, like what what multiplies to negative twenty four and adds to negative five. You know. Um, and, and really, since we have one of the f factors, x minus 4, we can guess and check. So um, there's a lot of um, strategies you could do other than the area model. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow through with the area model. I, I like it a lot. So um, we know that we need two rows for the factor x minus 4. And we know we're going to get a linear answer because we're going to get an answer that has a, a, a lower power than x squared. So we need a column for the x term and the constant term. So it's just going to be a, a box like this, which means we're not going to need any of this stuff out here. OK, so we, uh, we just repeat the process. 2x squared is going to go up here. And so what we need up here then to fill in that blank is a 2x. And then we can do our multiplication here. It looks like we get a negative x, excuse me, negative 8x. And then we know that <coughs> these diagonals are combined to make the x term. And that is a negative 5x. So I have a negative 8 in one box. I must need a positive in the other box, a uh, positive 3x. And uh, that's how I get my negative 5. And then that allows me to fill in my blank up here. So I'm missing a positive 3. That's that factor for that box. And then I, when I do my multiplication on the bottom, I get my negative 12. Um, so I get my, come on, there we go. I get that final um, I, it matches that final term. I forgot to put a box over around my minus 5x. So we know we have a match, <coughs> which means we have no, uh, no remainder. So we have a factor. And that factor is 2x plus 3. So now we know that the product, um, this product of 2x cubed minus x squared minus 22x minus 24 can be factored, and those factors, we started out way at the beginning here with x minus 2. Excuse me, x plus 2. I said that wrong. And then that led to this. This is an intermediate factor um, because we further um, decomposed it right here, right? We further reduced it here. And this factored into x minus 4 and then 2x plus 3. So uh, now we have our factored form, right? And from this factored form, um, <clears throat> now that we've taken our, our general form, right? I'm bringing back some, some uh, vocabulary from the first couple days of the unit. Now that we've taken our general form and divided it out to get to our factored form, we can do all of those things that we used to do with factored forms, right? We can graph. So we know that our x-intercepts are negative 2 and positive 4, right? They're what makes these things 0. 
This one's a little tricky. It's negative three over two. Okay, last one. Um, so we know that those are the x-intercepts. We know that the y-intercept is going to be <clears throat> two times negative four times three, because we're gonna put those zeros in. <coughs> we're gonna put the zeros in for x, and when we put a zero here, we get two. Put a zero here, we get negative four. Put a zero here, this whole thing is zero. We get positive three. So that's going to be, what is that, negative 24 for the y-intercept. So we can go and do all of those things. So that's, that's really useful to be able to divide it out. Um, okay, so let's go on to these questions here. Did the equations divide evenly? There's that, that phrase again. Again, not a fan, but you gotta just understand what they mean. And the answer is yes. Okay, what does that mean? That we had no remainders. And my handwriting is really sloppy. No remainders. There we go. Okay, write the polynomial in factored form. I did. It's, um, it's right up here. Here it is in factored form. It is uh, x plus 2 x minus 4, 2x plus 3. And then <clears throat> it's asking us to graph. So it wants us to graph this, this uh, polynomial, this product, so to speak. Um, so let's graph that. <clears throat> and so let's clear all this stuff. Uh, what do we have? We got 2x cubed uh, minus x squared minus 22x minus 24. And so when we graph that, um, I've got my y-axis really big here. Let me change my y-axis a little bit. A uh, second window. I'm up in the hundreds here. Let's go back to our standard uh, minus 10 and 10. I think that'll be okay. Yeah, it was, it was a little off, but I can bring it. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay. <clears throat> so identify the x-intercepts. And we did, right? We when, Once we had factored form, we could identify the x-intercepts. But let's confirm them here. So the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts, here's my first one. Whoops, I'm not quite on it. There we go. So it's x equals negative 2, right? And that comes from setting that one to 0. Right? It comes from saying x plus 2 equals 0 and solving that. And then the next one is x minus 4. So that's over here, right, at plus 4. So we have x equals 4, and that comes from that one. And that comes from x minus 4 equals 0, setting that equals 0 and solving it. And then the last one is right here. Let's see if I can grab it. Ah, there it is, negative 1.5, right? So x equals negative 1.5. And that comes from taking 2x plus 3, setting it equal to 0, right? Then we subtract 3. And we get 2x minus 3, or equals minus 3, excuse me. I said that wrong and then dividing by two. <clears throat> so we get x equals minus three halves, which is 1.5, negative 1.5. So we can confirm that, yep, that's in fact what we got algebraically just a little bit earlier. So the, the, the idea then of this area model is that we can fully factor. Um, and so we take, we use this area model to reduce the degree to quadratic. And then once we reach a quadratic point, if we want to continue with the area model, you can. Or if you want to use your other quadratic factoring techniques, you could as well. Um, totally up to you. So let's take a look at our um, learning targets. So we have learning target one. Just to kind of formalize this here. Learning target one says, um, it talks about that remainder, right? If um, <clears throat> the last terms 
in the area model matches the last term in the whew, product, then there is no remainder. Okay, so that's the first learning target. That is that that puts us on the road um, to factoring the polynomial and getting it in that factored form. Okay, um, that that's the you know kind of gets, gets our foot on the road there when we can find those factors that go in evenly, so to speak. Um, so when you uh, well, let's talk about the other learning targets. Uh, learning target two and three. Um, so it's factoring polynomials. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we look at the degree. We know that the degree, going back to that uh, activity we did with the uh, anchor chart, that the degree, I think it was day three, uh, the degree is the maximum number of uh, factors or uh, maximum number of factors. Let's, let's, let's use factors. Uh, that's the maximum number of x-intercepts, right? That's the other way of saying it. There we go. Okay, that's the first thing. So the first thing is to get the degree. And I, then, then we, we always need one factor. So we have to identify one factor. We, we need something to divide out that we know is going to divide out evenly. Okay? Um, and then the third step is use area model. For division. Right? We, we're, we're sidestepping a long division by using that area model. And again, if, if you're a fan of long division, I can show you how to do this all with long division. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> We're reducing that power, right? We're reducing the degree when we divide. So um, we can factor quadratics using any technique. I don't care what you use. Once you get it down to a quadratic, I don't care how you, how you uh, continue on with that. Um, OK, so as we are kind of, if you want to check your understanding, uh, if you want to do this, um, the, this will go in evenly. Um, this you don't have to do. And uh, this will also go in evenly, and it's exactly like we just did in the notes where you factor it fully. Um, the homework, I'm just kind of previewing the homework here. All of the homework has to do with fully factoring. So we will definitely have no remainders. Right? Remainders was just because um, we need to factor these fully. So uh, they're, they're going to have to go in evenly, so to speak. So remainders was really something specific to day six, just to kind of get that concept uh, understood.